Well, greetings, Vinyl Community. Today I'm going to go mostly very quickly through the albums that I've acquired over the past month or so, pausing over a few of them, or lingering over a few of them, uh, to tell a story or two, when deemed appropriate. Uh, starting with Concert in Japan by John Coltrane, 1966 recording featuring the quintet with uh, Alice Coltrane on piano, Rashida Lee on drums, the faithful Jimmy Garrison on bass, and Pharaoh Sanders joining John Coltrane on saxophone. Beautiful packaging. And this is a posthumous release that came out in 1973. It does feature the Coltrane Records imprint, where um, Alice Coltrane, uh, after John's death, set up her own label and released the Cosmic Music album, um, upon which Impulse got in touch with her and said, hey, why don't you just license the recordings through us and we can do really pretty packaging and it'll be better for everybody. And that's what she did going forward, including this release. Um, and they did release Cosmic Music with a prettier cover. This is a double LP. Features just two compositions spread over the four sides. Uh, Peace on Earth, which is about 25 minutes long, and Leo, which is 45 minutes long and uh, takes up portions of three sides. Uh, it's one of those automatic sequence releases, so that the first and fourth sides are on one disc, the second and third sides are on the other disc. This is a curious copy because here you've got side D, and here you've got side D. Yes, side one is mislabeled. And under the side designation, you'll see that this is in synthesized quad. So, who knows? I uh, don't have a quad system to play on it to hear quite how synthesized that is. Um, another curiosity about this album is that when the, the group arrived in Japan, the Yamaha Corporation presented John Coltrane and Pharaoh Sanders with saxophones to try out. And they were alto saxophones. So they play them on this recording, and it's a rare instance of John Coltrane playing alto on record. It may be the only instance that I can think of. Also from 1973, so also on that Impulse neon label, Sun Ra Atlantis. This is a reissue of an earlier release on Sun Ra's Saturn records, except that they used an alternate take of one of the tracks. Some funky organ jazz from Charles Ireland, Black Talk, including The Mighty Burner. Uh, this is uh, Charles Ireland on organ, Virgil Jones on trumpet, Houston Person on tenor, Melvin Sparks on guitar, Idris Muhammad on drums, and Buddy Caldwell playing conga on the Mighty Burner. Um, side two of this album is taken up with two extended covers of 1969 pop hits, so that really anchors this one in time. Um, Aquarius and more today than yesterday, 11 minutes worth. And this is on the purple prestige label. A new 2019 reissue on Blue Note of Herbie Hancock's classic Taken Off. This features the great Watermelon Man, which is a favorite of mine um, to play at jams uh, and is a track that will come up again in this video or a composition that will come up again in this video. Uh, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Dexter Gordon on tenor, Butch Warren on bass, Billy Higgins on drums, and Herbie Hancock on piano. And another 2019 release on Blue Note on the Tone Poet series, which means everybody's going to be showing this one, Andrew Hill, Black Fire, uh, with Joe Henderson on tenor sax, Richard Davis on bass, Roy Haynes on drums, and Andrew Hill on piano. Brilliant record. This is so great. Wonderful compositions, recorded in uh, 1963. Uh, just 
terrific twisty melodies for the four masters to improvise on. And being a fancy tone port release, we get this Francis Wolf photography from the session on the inside. From 1968, Roland Kirk, The Inflated Tear. Uh, all Roland Kirk originals except for Duke Ellington's Creole Love Call. Uh, Roland Kirk plays tenor sax, manzello, stritch, clarinet, flute, whistle, English horn, or flexophone. With Ron Burton on piano, Steve Novosel on bass, and Jimmy Hops on drums. And this is on the Atlantic green and blue label, which I don't see quite so much. 2016 Blue Note reissue, Sam Rivers, Fuchsia Swing Song. This has uh, Rivers on tenor, Jackie Bayard on piano, Ron Carter on bass, and Anthony Williams on drums. I'm closing out the jazz section of this video. 1978 Revolutionary Ensemble with Leroy Jenkins on violin, Cerrone on bass, and Jerome Cooper on drums. Great album, extremely colorful, free jazz, but still compositionally based. Um, the album opens with a passage where all three musicians are playing flutes, so that gives you just a little indication of the way they're exploring sounds. This is uh, on the Inner City label from 1978. Okay, and now moving on to the Prague part of our program, starting with Matching Mole's Little Red Record. This is the second and last album by Matching Mole from 1973. Matching Mole is the band that Robert Wyatt formed after leaving or being elbowed out of Soft Machine, and the band's name is a pun on the French translation of Soft Machine, Machine Mole. Uh, this is from 1973, and it uh, very much carries the Soft Machine DNA. Um, if Soft Machine had kept their sense of humor and carried on with Robert Wyatt being able to contribute to the extent that he did when they were uh, in their earlier stages, they might have produced something like this. There is a, a jazz element courtesy of Dave McRae. There is a spacey element to it. Uh, the album is produced by Robert Fripp, which Phil Miller found very intimidating. Uh, Brian Eno guests on VCS3 Synthesizer and is billed as uh, this summer's guest superstar. And the, uh, there are a lot of strange vocal um, dialogue bits going on in the background by Der Mutter Chorus, which includes Ruby Crystal. And Ruby Crystal is actually the actress Julie Christie. Uh, who is a friend of Robert Wyatt and his partner, Alfie. There's a, a, a terrific bit of um, um, dialogue going on under the track Nantru's Hole, um, a track by Phil Miller which would turn up again in the Hatfield and the North repertoire under the title O oh, Lens Nature which is an anagram of Nantru's Hole, and I think it was released uh, one or two other times with different anagram titles. As befits a little red record, this is read right down to its inner sleeve. Release on Columbia Records, this is a, uh, a US copy. Amazing that it even got released, that was a different time. Caravan and the New Symphonia. Uh, this is, I think, one of the more successful fusions of rock band and orchestra. This is from 1974 and features the uh, Caravan lineup with uh, Pi Hastings on guitar, Jeffrey Richardson on viola, uh, which suits the orchestral format, uh, Richard Coughlin, of course, on drums, John G. Perry on bass and vocals, and Dave Sinclair formerly of Matching Mole, or, uh, yes, formerly of Matching Mole at this time, um, on keyboards. Cl 
Clear Light from 1975, Forever Blowing Bubbles. Terrific, spacey fusion prog, very much in the vein of Gong. Um, David Cross from King Crimson appears on violin. Uh, members of uh, Lard Free appear. And this is on the Virgin label. Also from 1975, the fourth album by Griffin, Rain Dance. Uh, this album finds them pretty much abandoning the medieval, the uh, British folk and Renaissance uh, influences, but retaining a lot of classical feel, uh, still very prog, but there is an element of pop, particularly in the track uh, don't Say Go, which has a, a very jerky, uh, odd rhythm, but very cheerful, and it's a lot like something that Cat Stevens might have done. Uh, they also do a Beatles cover. They do uh, Mother Nature's Son. Um, there's also a lot of humor to this. Uh, there's a classical styled epic, very pretentiously titled Ein Klein Heldenleben. Can I show the back? There's the back. And yet again from 1975, classic first solo album by Steve Hackett, Voyage of the Acolyte. Uh, tracks based on images from the tarot deck, Ace of Wands, Hands of the Priestess, A Tower Struck Down, uh, The Hermit, The Star of Sirius, The Lovers, and Shadow of the Hierophant. Uh, this is one of the two stealth Genesis albums that came out around this time, the other being Anthony Phillips' The Geese and the Ghost, both of them albums by Genesis guitarists with uh, Mike Rutherford and Phil Collins helping out. Uh, this also has Steve Hackett's brother John on flute, arp synthesizer, and bells. John Acock on Elka Rhapsody Synthesizer, Mellotron, Harmonium, and Piano. Uh, three vocal tracks, each by a different singer. Uh, Steve Hackett sings one himself, Sally Oldfield sings one, and Phil Collins sings one. Um, also Robin Miller, uh, familiar as a session man with King Crimson during their earlier period on oboe and Coranglay and Nigel Warren Green on solo cello. Great, great prog album. Artwork by Steve Hackett's partner, Kim Poor. First album by John and Vangelis, featuring John Anderson of Yes on vocals and Vangelis on keyboards, drums, and everything else. Uh, this is the album that features I Hear You Now, um, and also the album that begins with the immortal lyrics, sitting here in the television, looking at the tube sitting next to me, he's not been very well lately. From 1977, the second solo album from Roxy Music's Phil Manzanera, or you could look at it as the second album by the group 801, uh, Listen Now. Wonderful album, a lot of very dark lyrics uh, referencing a repressive society as reflected in the cover art. Um, not entirely uh, a prog rock album, a lot of it is just more very intelligent pop. Um, I kind of feel a kinship with Steely Dan, although without the, the jazz uh, influence being there. It is more of a, a fusion thing when it does get instrumental. There is a gorgeous, sublime instrumental island uh, written by Manzanera Solo. Um, a very flashy instrumental initial speed. Um, great cast of musicians, extraordinary arrangements. Um, you've got Mel Collins doing the multiple saxophone thing uh, that you hear him do sometimes on the early King Crimson records on um, the title track. 
um, a particular moment. You know how sometimes there's a specific little tiny detail on a record that uh, really catches your ear. On the song City of Light, there's the line, Hooker's prowl, the look, the pout, the open invitation to liaison swift and cold. On the word swift, there's just this little background noise that goes like which appears nowhere else in the song. And it's the kind of detail that just makes you appreciate how much thought went into these arrangements. Um, it's not quite a cast of thousands, but it is an extraordinary crew of musicians. Simon Ainley is doing the lead vocals, um, whereas Brian Eno had been the singer on the 801 Live album. Um, Eno does appear on this album uh, as an instrumentalist. Mel Collins on saxes, uh, Godly and Krim from 10CC, Tim Finn, Eddie Jobson, Bill McCormick from Matching Mole, Francis Monkman from the future Matching Mole. And I'm going to go back to Matching Mole because I didn't tell that story. After this album was released, uh, Matching Mole broke up, but Bill McCormick sort of nudged Robert Wyatt into reforming the band. So they did regroup with uh, Bill McCormick on bass and Robert Wyatt on drums and um, the new keyboard player was to be Francis Monkman from Curved Air. And they initially approached Fred Frith to play guitar but decided that instead of having a guitarist they were going to have tenor sax so they got Gary Window in on saxophone and this band got as far as a meeting or a rehearsal or two before Robert Wyatt had his accident, which put an end to his drumming career when uh, he fell out of a window at a party and broke his back. So was no longer able to use his, uh, his legs for the lower part of the drum kit. But he's carried on with uh, an excellent musical career nonetheless. Um, as the title and cover imply, there's a political awareness in this. Robert Wyatt did go on to become an active member in the British Communist Party. Uh, at this point, I think he was doing it a bit ironically. The first track on the album is, Starting in the middle of the day, we can drink our politics away. On the other hand, the album includes lyrics about how long can I pretend that music is more, more relevant than fighting for a socialist world. So uh, he was feeling the tug at this point, I think. Moving on. Uh, still in that Canterbury vein and with uh, former matching mole man Phil Miller on guitar, National Health, their second album of Cues and Cures. And this is a brilliant classic and I've got to get rid of this glare. There we go. indispensable album. Popol Vuh Nosferatu, one of their nominal Werner Herzog soundtrack albums that actually doesn't have a great deal to do with the music that you actually hear in the movie, but it's a great excuse for a great album. 2018 reissue of the 1976 album by Potemkin, Fetus. Uh, this is very proggy, fusion, uh, it's a bit magma-like, so it has that Zool music DNA to it. And that's a reissue on the Replica label. Release Music Orchestra from 1977, sort of uh, somewhat commercial, not, not brilliant, but enjoyable fusion music on the Brain label from Germany. And closing out the Prague section of the video, brand new release of Mother Mania by Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. This is the uh, compilation that came out uh, when Frank Zappa was just transitioning from 
Verve to his own label and features different mixes of tracks from the first three Mothers of Invention album. This is the Newbury Comics release on this vinyl. And I'm going to close out with some blues. This has been on my want list. The Way It Is by Big Mama Thornton. Uh, this is a live recording uh, released in 1970 and is recorded in Hollywood at The Experience. Big Mama's dialogue, her chatter between tracks and even during tracks is utterly hilarious not least in uh, her version of Watermelon Man. I told you there'd be a callback to that one. Um, she does so many classic tracks on here. She does uh, Little Red Rooster, One Black Rat, Rock Me Baby, Wade in the Water, uh, Baby Please Don't Go, Got My Mojo Working, Watermelon Man, uh, Don't Need No Doctor, and um, being recorded in California, she makes a couple of not very complimentary references to the then-governor, one Ronald Reagan. And while I was looking for that, I happened to find this. A 1969 album that preceded that one, Stronger Than Dirt. And that, of course, is from the Ajax Laundry Detergent commercial from... 1969, also referenced on The Doors' Touch Me, which, if you're taking notes, you remember from my Doors video recently. This is uh, interesting for being not strictly blues. She does uh, That Lucky Old Son. She does Bob Dylan's I Shall Be Released. Um, she does a version of Funky Broadway. Summertime, um, but certainly there's uh, there's um, the real blues in Born Under a Bad Sign. She brings back Hound Dog. She brings back Ball and Chain. Uh, she does Buddy Waters' Rolling Stone. This copy, when I received it, was completely seam split from side to side, both top and bottom. So it was like a a gatefold unwillingly and I did an experiment with it I repaired it with glue I just got a little wood glue across the bottom across the top and it really did the trick I just don't like it because it feels rough on top bottom bottom came out smoother but um, at least it's together So, that's all for now. That's plenty for now. Music in the background is The Insect Garden by some guy who uses my toothbrush. Be well, and I'll talk with you again soon.